I'm so glad you're watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. I was praying about our time together and God dropped a verse in my heart for you. And it's Isaiah 55 verse eight. And it says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your, my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. Verse nine says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And I just, as I was praying for our time together, God spoke to me and said, you know, some of our individuals watching are thinking uh, kind of natural carnal thoughts, fleshly thoughts, but not necessarily thinking in the same zone or area as God. And some of us were behaving because of the way we think our actions. When we think carnal thoughts, flesh thoughts, then we have carnal actions and flesh, flesh actions. <laughs> that is a little tricky there. But God is calling us and encouraging us not to think in those low levels, not to act in those low levels, but really to step up and ask God to give you his thoughts and to help you to work in his ways. So I just encourage you today that you hop on the phone or get on the website and just ask for prayer. Pray for me that I wouldn't be uh, thinking in a carnal way, thinking and acting in a carnal way. And sometimes, you know, when we hit busy seasons like Christmas or high, high demand season, sometimes a tax season <laughs> can be a little stressful too. If we're not careful, those pressures can push out some carnal thinking and some carnal behaviors, behaviors that are not honoring and not pleasing to God. And this verse here says, uh, so as far as the heavens are from the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So God is encouraging and challenging us not to stay in kind of those low carnal levels, but really to step it up and walk and think uh, and, and behave as God would have us do and not in the carnal way. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would help you, especially at this time. And you know, before, uh, before we wrap this up, I want to encourage you that I'm going to be sharing a really powerful teaching with you. I'm really excited. This is all about the Holy Spirit our helper. And I'm telling you, this will be a really powerful insight and wisdom in who the Holy Spirit is, how the Holy Spirit works. Because really, when we think about the Holy Spirit, we, we understand God the Father, we understand God the Son, but when we talk about God the Holy Spirit, that can be a little tricky for us. How do we get our arms around that? So I want you to watch this teaching and it will really help you to understand who the Holy Spirit is. We're going to be talking about good news and when we think about good news, I want to just kind of open this up and tell you a little story one time. Anybody ever use a GPS Garmin kind of thing? GPS. How many of you use them frequently? How many of you have used it only once? Yeah. Well, the first time I used it, um, I, was, uh, I landed in Dallas and rented a car. And I had talked with a friend of mine. I, my flight landed around 8 o'clock. And our plan was, she lives about 10 minutes from the airport, so I was going to zip over to her house um, before I went to the hotel and grab a bite, to din bite of dinner at her house. And so I was kind of excited. But I'm the type of person, I don't really like to read instructions. I just like to figure it out as I go. Anybody relate to that? So don't send the instructions with me. No, I'm not going to download it. And no, I'm not going to print them out. So. I got the little thing, plugged it in. I saw somebody use it once, so I figured I could figure it out. So I get the GPS and I get it plugged into the car and I'm kind of excited to see my friend. I haven't talked with her for a little while. I plug in the destination, you know, and it does that calculating thingy, you know, it's doing the thinking, time, whatever thing. So it's all plugged in and while it's waiting and it's doing its thing, I get on the phone, I talk to my friend, start talking to her, and then I turn on the CD player. So, you know, I've got all kinds of fun things going on. And uh, I pull out of the airport and it's doing that calculating thing, calculating, calculating. I'm getting a little impatient. I figure, well, it's close enough. I've been to my friend's house before. I can kind of figure it out. And, you know, it'll, it'll catch up with me <laughs> while the radio's going in while I'm talking on the phone with my friend at the same time. So <laughs> finally it kind of catches up. And so it tells me, you know, turn left and point two miles or whatever. So I'm listening to it and I'm following it, talking to my friend. And, and I'm really having a lot of fun. The music's kind of loud. And and uh, I think I know where I'm going, but so I keep hearing in the background, remember I've only used this, this is my first time, I keep hearing in the background, recalculating, 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 and I'm like, whatever that means, you know, it'll figure it out. <laughs> so I keep driving, and uh, you know, it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes outside of the airport, and, and I, 
you know, something's not right, you know. So if I decide I'm gonna turn down the radio because I can't hear anything, and, and it keeps doing that recalculating, and I asked my friend on the phone, I'm like, um, do, have you ever heard of such and such a highway? And she's, and she's lived there her whole life, so she knows Dallas like the back of her hand. She's like, uh, no, I have never, ever heard of that highway before. And uh, so it, obviously it was really bad news, and finally after like 30 minutes, I figured out where I was, and I told her, and she's like, oh my goodness, you know, that's really far away from where I am. And then she said, now where are you going? And I explained, you know, I'm going to Wax- Waxahachie. I have a speaking, oh, that's like an hour and a half drive from where you're at. You can, and I was like, ugh, turn off the CD player, put down the phone, and start to pay attention. Anybody struggle with that? You know, I learned the hard way, but I eventually got to the hotel and everything worked out. I just skipped dinner for the night, and that probably wasn't a bad idea. But when we think about uh, good news, that recalculating thing is not good news. (laughs) How many of you know that's bad news? When she says recalculating, that's very bad news. But I wanna give you good news today, and good news as it pertains to the Holy Spirit. When you think about the Holy Spirit, when Jesus introduced the Holy Spirit to his disciples in John chapter 14, he told them, he said, it is good for you, it's better for you that I go away. Because when I go away, then the Holy Spirit will come. That's good news. Now, if you're the disciples listening to him that night, you're probably thinking, how is that good news? You're leaving us, that's bad news. But what you're telling us is good news, that the Holy, it's better that the Holy Spirit's going to come. And so when we think about the Holy Spirit, Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit to us right off the bat as good news. And I want you to think about this. When we think about the Holy Spirit, and we think about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we have gifts here, you know, it's kind of self-evident. How many of you can name out some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Gifts, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna think gifts as opposed to fruit. So there's a difference. 1 Corinthians 12 is the gifts. Okay, so name some of those gifts. Prophecy, speaking in tongues, words of knowledge, interpretation of tongues, faith, miracles, healing, discerning of spirits. Mom's here, she can fill in the gaps. <laughs> So gifts of the Holy Spirit, how many of you think those are good news? Absolutely good news. So I want you to write on your, on your notes there, I want you to write at the top, destination, destination. So we think about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and if I was you and you were me, we'd wanna wrap those, unwrap those gifts and plunge into them right now. I don't think there's a person in the room, person watching on TV, that wouldn't say, I would like to have the power of God working in my life. Miracles, healing, faith, Uh, All kinds of stuff. We like the gifts. How many of you like the gifts? It's good news. That's fantastic. That's one of the things we want, a destination we want in our life. We think about the fruit of the Spirit. And Benji, this is where you're going to help me. If you'll pop up here. And Reese, can you give him a little microphone? Or Or a big microphone, depending on your size. Every morning when we drive to school, we sing, we do our confessions and everything. And then we sing a song that's the fruit of the Spirit. Can you sing it for us, please? Um, I'll sing it with you. Okay. One, two, put the mic. One, two, three. The The fruit fruit of the Spirit Spirit is love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. The The fruit fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, anyone in the room not want that fruit? We may not like the process. (laughs) to get the fruit, but we like the fruit. How many of you agree? Thank you so much, you did a great job. Fruit of the Spirit. We want those things. We want love in our life, we want peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, we want all of that. That's a destination. How many of you agree? That's a fruit, I want, I want that goal. I, that's good news to me. Fruits and gifts, this is a destination. Then I'm gonna throw out one more thing too with the Holy Spirit. If you remember or you've read about Acts chapter two, this is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. You read about it in verses one through four. It says all the disciples were gathered in the upper room one day and they were in unity. And it says the Holy Spirit came in like a great and mighty wind, flooded through the the room. 
there were like tongues of fire on their heads, and they all began to speak in tongues. They went out into the streets of Jerusalem and created quite an uproar, quite an uproar. You read through this whole chapter, and at the end of it, I mean, you got thousands of people giving their hearts to Jesus. For all practical purposes, this is the first day of the Christian church. Make sense to you? It's kind of the inauguration, if you will. So the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we, I like these things. This is all good news. Agree with me? And if we think about it, we want these things in our lives, and hopefully we don't just want them on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. We don't want them in a religious context only and isolated. But if, if I was you and you were me, we want these things in our daily living. I want to pray for somebody at Walmart with a gift of healing and see them get out of their wheelchair. Anybody think that would be totally amazing? You'd be on that page, you like that idea? Anybody want any kind of patience in their daily living? Absolutely, peace in your heart. We think about healings, miracles. Some of you need word of wisdom and word of knowledge. You need discerning of spirits. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We want these things. This is all good news and this is all a destination. We want to have these things operating in our daily life. Marilyn and Sarah know firsthand how meditating on God's Word can change lives. Their new book features 30 biblical meditations on important topics in life. When Christians hear the word meditate, they frequently associate it with being a difficult, time-consuming task. I've discovered that it adds a refreshing quality to my study of God's Word. This book teaches the benefits of meditating on God's Word and includes convenient tearaway scripture cards to help readers maintain their focus throughout their busy lives. For your gift of $20 or more, we'll send you 30 Meditations on Rest, Maryland's Renew Your Mind booklet, Marilyn and Sarah's new personal confession CD, which includes the daily confessions they speak over every day. And for an additional $10, we'll send you a second 30 Meditations on Rest book for you to share with a family member or friend. Call or click to receive this very special offer. I want to thank you so much for your faithful support of Saving Moses over this past year. We've seen incredible things happen in 2013, and I want you to know that this ministry has lots and lots more to accomplish. But this past year, because of your faithful support, we were able to feed almost 3,000 babies for our six malnutrition clinics in Angola. I mean, that's totally incredible. And in Cambodia, we get to provide night care to the babies and toddlers of sex workers six nights a week. And because of you, we get to save babies every day where the need is most urgent and the help is least available. This is a tangible expression of God's genuine love in a very powerful way. So as this year wraps up, I want to encourage you to give an end of the year gift. Please give as the Holy Spirit directs you and thank you again for making 2013 such an incredible year. As I talked about at the beginning of the message, if that's our destination, if we have our little GPS and we type in here, fruit of the Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that's our destination. That's good news. We wanna land there. We wanna arrive there with very little recalculating. <laughs> right? Let's cut down the recalculating. Well, one of the things that's necessary, if we're going to, if that's our destination, and you wrote that down, destination, then I want you to consider what's your starting point. Because part of the problem when I was in Dallas, and I had my little GPS thing, is I never gave it time to figure out where I was starting. <laughs> it kept doing that little, uh, what's that thing called? where you flip it. Recalculating. No, hourglass, thanks so much. I appreciate the help. The hourglass, you know, it kept flipping, thinking and lack of fruit of the spirit. I was very impatient. <laughs> so the starting point, what's our starting point? If that's the goal and that's our destination and, and the move and the uh, evidence of the Holy Spirit in our daily living, then what's the starting point? Because all that stuff is in the, in the future and, and something that we're aiming towards and walking towards, but where do we start? And I think sometimes if we're not careful, I'm from a charismatic background, and I think sometimes we think that we just jump into that and that's all the Holy Spirit right there. 
but I want to back you up a little bit because Jesus didn't start all over here in the middle of everything with the Holy Spirit, kaboom, and have this like nuclear explosion Holy Spirit thing. Jesus started back here in John chapter 14, 15, and 16, and I want you to write this in your notes, starting point. He didn't just suddenly go kaboom and there's the Holy Spirit. He walked his disciples through who is the Holy Spirit. He didn't just suddenly show up and, and say, well, the Holy Spirit is some kind of ethereal, you know, amazing Hollywood special effects, floaty little weirdo thing. Jesus backed us up and said, here's the starting point. I want to introduce to you who the Holy Spirit is. That's the starting point, ground zero. So John, and I'm gonna walk you through who the Holy Spirit, the introduction that Jesus gives to us, who the Holy Spirit is. First off, and I want you to write these things down. John 14 through 16, chapters 14, 15, 16, Jesus introduces and says, this is who the Holy Spirit is. Right off the bat, and I want you to catch this really very, very significantly. In John chapter 14, Verse 16, this is the very first mention of the Holy Spirit that Jesus gives to his disciples. And when he introduces the Holy Spirit, he says, I will give you another, who knows the word? Helper, comforter. I want you to catch that right off the bat, Jesus does not introduce the Holy Spirit in his official title as Holy Spirit. Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit as the helper. Now, I'm gonna ask my friend, Mrs. Uliberry, if you'll stand up. Yes, thank you so much. This is Mrs. Uliberry. She's an amazing person, incredible stuff, very creative, beautiful, amazing, cool things. Everybody, I could introduce you to her in a formal way as Mrs. Uliberry. And that would be a formal title and, you know, kind of a nice, uh, respectful way, honoring way for you to meet her. But if I was really honest with you, if you could pop up here with me for a little minute, I would introduce you to her because I know her better than Mrs. Uliberry. This is my friend, Sophie. This is my buddy, Sophie. We've had, we've had faux together. <laughs> we've talked together, laughed together. We've worked on Saving Moses some together done some cool stuff. We haven't had a lot of time lately just because of busy schedules, but this is my buddy Sophie. Everybody say hi, Sophie. Hi, Sophie. <laughs> now, when I introduce you to her, I have a choice of introducing you to her as Sophie or Mrs. Uliberry. Which one is more personal? Sophie. The more formal one is Mrs. Uliberry. When Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit to you, the very first thing out of the gate, he doesn't introduce this is Mr. Holy Spirit. He doesn't do that. He says, I'm gonna send you the helper, Sophie, your buddy, your comforter, your friend, the one who walks alongside you that you can hang out with, who's gonna be with you and never leave you. Omnipresent. Not the formal title, dignified, bishop, pastor, ecclesiastical cardinal, none of that stuff, helper. Thank you so much, you did awesome. Sophie, the helper. When you think about the Trinity, you think about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Those are all formal titles. But God didn't come and reveal himself, or their selves, because there's three of them, <laughs> didn't reveal themselves in a formal way, when God came to the earth, he introduced himself to us as Jesus. Not the Son of God, but Jesus in a manger, personal. Intimate, helpless, and really, when you think about it, born to a single mom out of wedlock. I mean, go through all that stuff. I mean, this is nitty gritty, human, deeply relational, deeply personal. And Jesus does the same thing with the helper doesn't introduce on a formal, you know, but very personal and grounded and relational. Now I'm gonna walk you through a couple more things. When Jesus speaks about the helper to us, John 14, 17 and 16, 13, he also reveals the helper as the spirit of truth. 
So we're over here at our starting point, and Jesus is describing the helper to us. So right off the bat, I want you to write in your notes, starting point, helper. Next thing I want you to write, spirit of truth. Next thing, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit, the helper, is our teacher. Teacher. Not lecturer, but teacher. The best way to learn something is with the teacher being present with you, one-on-one, as a coach, as a mentor, as somebody that's right there watching exactly what you're doing. Teacher, this is in John 14, 26, reminding us of Jesus' teachings, all right? I want you to catch another thing. When Jesus speaks about the helper, he also says that the helper glorifies Jesus. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I remember growing up, we used to sing a song back in the day, three buildings before. Jesus, 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 there's just something about your name. I remember when we'd start singing the name Jesus, and we'd start saying the name Jesus, something would kind of like get perked up in me. Anybody ever feel that? Like it just sudden, Jesus. And I want to tell you, that's the helper, that's the Holy Spirit testifying to who Jesus is. You want a lightning rod for the Holy Spirit, for the helper? Start saying the name of Jesus. (laughs) This week in my car, I was struggling on some issues and really having, having some Jacob wrestling time with God, you know, Genesis 22, in the dirt, and I just started saying, Jesus, 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 in my car, kids weren't around, all by myself, and I did it with the entire expectancy of the presence of the Holy Spirit becoming more active and engaged, my awareness of the Holy Spirit increasing in the car because I desperately need help. <laughs> help. And sometimes the best way for to kind of perk up the Holy Spirit in your daily life is just to say the name of Jesus. Because he says that. He'll testify, the Holy Spirit, the helper, will testify of Jesus. So in this introduction, Jesus also says that the Holy Spirit convicts. So you want to write that down? The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus, convicts. You ever get that yucky feeling inside, you're doing something wrong, you're saying something wrong, you're in a gossipy conversation, you're being mean, you should have let that person in in front of you with the traffic, convict. Let me just tell you, this is the starting point, this is the Holy Spirit, this is the helper in your life, and I'm raising your awareness. That's our destination, we wanna go there, but let's figure out where we are first and who the helper is in our life so that As we go on the journey, we're not perpetually recalculating (laughs) and taking lots of detours and lots of getting lost and losing the boat. Oh my goodness. We don't need recalculating in our life. The straightest or the shortest distance between two points is what? Straight line. So when we walk with the Holy Spirit and we know the helper more and more and more, the straighter the line is to the destination. Gifts, fruit, outpouring. You with me? How many of you know this is good news? This is the helper in our lives. So starting point, convicts, and then chapter 16, verse 13, shares what's to come. The Holy Spirit reveals, (laughs) here's the path, Sarah. I'm the helper, I'm gonna walk you through. This is what's coming. Because the helper walks with us, is on the journey in our daily living. I wanna thank you so much for your faithful support of Saving Moses over this past year. We've seen incredible things happen in 2013, and I want you to know that this ministry has lots and lots more to accomplish. But this past year, because of your faithful support, we were able to feed almost 3,000 babies for our six malnutrition clinics in Angola. I mean, that's totally incredible. And in Cambodia, we get to provide night care to the babies and toddlers of sex workers six nights a week. And because of you, we get to save babies every day where the need is most urgent and the help is least available. This is a tangible expression of God's genuine love in a very powerful way. 
So as this year wraps up, I want to encourage you to give an end of the year gift. Please give as the Holy Spirit directs you and thank you again for making 2013 such an incredible year. We are so excited because for the first time in the history of our ministry, we get to do a group trip, Mom, and bring you with us to Ethiopia. Oh, and I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am that you can come with us and minister and see amazing things in Ethiopia. Mom, tell us what some of the things are that we're well, seeing. Well, we're going to visit Aksum, and Aksum is where they say they have the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, Ethiopia is mentioned over 90 times in the Bible. That is so interesting there. And then we're going to be going to Lalibela, which is where the rock hewn church is. That is considered one of the seven wonders of the world in this timing. And of course, the healing meetings we will have in Addis Ababa. You will love it. And God wants you to go. Why? Because I want you to use your hands to lay hands on the sick and to help us bring a great revival to this wonderful nation. Come with us. Did you know that one prayer can change your life forever? You say one prayer. Yes, one prayer. When I was 16 years old, I prayed one prayer that is still changing my life. I'm in my 70s and not only is it changing my life daily and has for all these years, but I have eternal life because of that one prayer. Oh, that prayer transforms everything. You say, well, what is the prayer? And I'll tell you what it is. I invited Jesus to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I repented of my sins and he came into my heart and he's never left me. And he will never leave you either because the Bible says, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will give you eternal life. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Maybe you've never prayed it. Maybe you've prayed it, but your life is out of sync. Hey, you can pray and recommit your life to him. Pray with me right now. Mean this with your heart. Say, Father, I believe you love me. You have a wonderful plan for my life. I am sorry for my sins and the wrong things I have done. Please forgive me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. I have faith in his blood. Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Your life is changed and transformed. You will never be the same. Did you recommit your life? Expect transformation. And above all, know that your name is written in heaven and not in hell.